kids on the worship team? Let's talk. Hi, I'm Rob Reed. This is Worship Leader 101. I've been a worship leader at Lifehouse Church in Northridge for the last nine years. Been on the worship team since 2005. And in fact, I wasn't even a believer when I was first on the team. You'll find out more about that, I'm sure, later. But for now, I've decided to start a string of these worship leader um, things that I've learned as a worship leader in the past nine years as a member of a worship team in the past 15. Wow. Wow goes by so fast when you're serving God. It's really, really amazing. Kids on the worship team. Short answer, it's amazing. Yes, it's a great idea. Positives. Some of these kids know more than we do. Mom and dad have been training them on the piano since they were little tiny kids. And I can speak from personal experience. Two of the greatest musicians that I played with, both piano players, both first started with me when they were under 15 years old. One of them was uh, new to the worship team. She had played just a, a couple months, I think, before I was handed the baton. And she carried me. She was the one who, when I had to write the music and come up with the chords, I'm kind of a hack. I'll be honest with you. I'm okay. I've been playing for a while. But when I try and figure out songs, I usually do it like the, the bass note on the guitar. And I don't know my keys, my B minor from my Bs, my A from my A minor, depending on what key I'm in. I just know I'm playing an A root. So she's the one that would be like, Rob. It's an A minor, not an A. Thanks. Because she'd know the music theory. And it, it was that kind of help and that kind of like, because I felt that I wasn't a good enough musician with all the knowledge to be able to do it. But, you know, God put me there and God put her there and she uh, really, really helped me out. So it was a benefit. The intergenerational aspect of it. We have people that we've had people on the team that were in their 70s. And we have people on their team, I think, as, as young before as, I think, 12 years old, one of our singers was when she first started. And that multi-generational thing, you just can't beat that. That's what the church is about. It's not about the building. It's about the people. And we're trying to bring up young people into the faith, mentor them, and teach them. And you can't do it any better than in this wonderful way to be able to serve God. We model for them because. When you're a leader, you suffer from a lot of a lot of things start happening and they watch and they can learn. They'll see when I get a note saying, can you guys turn up the music a little bit? We want some rockier numbers. And then the next week I'll get a note saying, could you keep it down? And they'd see the way that I would try and be gracious. Not always, but I we try and model. And not only is it a way, a great way to serve the Lord, mentor them in the Lord, teach them scripture, teach them good, solid theology from the music, maybe even introduce hymns along with them, uh, which is interesting for me because and this is an aside. Chris Tomlin is like a hymn for me. Arriving is like that's when I arrived into the Christian fold. And uh, so, yeah, hymns, I've learned a lot in the last 15 years, still have a lot more to learn, but I can pass that on to them, my love of some of the old hymns. But this one individual I wanted to talk about, this young man who, who was playing with me when I think he was 14, 15 on the keys, uh, probably better than the, the girl that I've already referenced in terms of understanding music theory. He ended up at Azusa Pacific. He's going there now. He's majoring in music. And I guarantee you, he's going to be a, a future wonderful a uh, spirit-filled worship leader of a church in the future. Whoever you are in the future, you're going to be very blessed. Now, that being said, it's not all roses. The negative part, unfortunately, comes in because, and it's the same, I'm a little league coach. It's, it's always the same. as well-intentioned parents who want to see their kid on the little league field pitch and not play right field, who want to see their kid playing on holidays or whatever, Grandma's coming in. So it's a stage parent syndrome. It affects you. It can affect you. And so you have to be precise 
in your speech and gracious to people. Yes and no, not maybes, because they hear maybes or like not giving firm answers as a potential yes. They really hear yes. I think we all do. I'm not just blaming the parents, especially around the holiday time, Easter and Christmas. They're very, very big dates. And I have a policy where if I have somebody in the, the band who's been very dedicated and played most of the weekends with us, as has happened many, many times, that person, the, the Christmas or Easter, that's theirs. They've earned it. They've, they've earned the ability. They played in front of smaller crowds in, in the church uh, in order to, to want to play in the exciting uh, nighttime Christmas service or the bigger crowds of, of Easter. And so that's always been my policy. And I had an issue when I wasn't very specific to a particular parent. The child was a very, very good musician, but they moved away. And I said that when somebody leaves, I said, you have an open invitation. Anytime that you want to come back, come back. We'll get you on somehow. And if I can't, then I'll let you know. But I don't know if I said that in this particular occasion. And we had a new bassist, also a young person, and he was fantastic, who, it was his gig. It was his Christmas Eve. And about a week before Christmas Eve, I get an email from this mother of the family that had left about six, seven months before and said, we're coming into town. You said there's an open invitation and I want my daughter to play bass. Well, I already had somebody committed to bass. It was his, he was excited to play on Christmas Eve. He was a young kid. And so that was what was going to happen. And if I didn't have him go, the, his parents were going to be upset with me, right? So I was in that catch 22. But I balanced it out by saying, well, you know, I'm sorry that, that that's the case, but we already have the basis, but I'm happy to put her in the vocal team. So we'll have a girl, she can sing with us Christmas. That unfortunately was not good enough. It became a whole grandma's coming. Everyone's going to be so disappointed. You're ruining our Christmas. And it was very hurtful. I felt very sad. If I take the blame, some of that for myself, it was that I wasn't firm enough at the beginning saying open invitation, but give me notice. When we talk about our, our kids and we want our kids to be involved and we so, we're so proud of them. Sometimes those things mix up and then God sort of gets forgotten in the whole mix, right? And that's just the human condition and that's why we need Jesus. But in the end, kids on the worship team, you better believe it. If you have a big church, you should try and figure out a way to incorporate them. It's about a joyful noise, as scripture says. It's not about having this great talent. Not everybody's going to be a Whitney Houston or a Celine Dion or a Chris Tomlin. But if you haven't been on a worship team uh, or you're just starting with worship leading, I'm happy to try and help you with the things that I've learned. But there's not a lot. You just rely on God. And I'm going to try and you know, talk about small things that happen, uh, have happened to me, maybe that I would have done differently as we go along. Uh, probably some of these uh, worship lesson 101s might be just showing you how to play particular songs. I think I might go that route too, and then I can probably get my wife to join. But I'm glad that you're here, and I'm happy to help in any way. You can reach me at uh, robertreed at gmail.com. And uh, I'm also in, in my normal gig. I'm an attorney in Encino, California. Again, the church is Lifehouse Church in Northridge, California. Feel free to come on by and say hello. And if you're in that area and you're looking for a worship team to play on, give me a ring. If you have a child, same thing, but make note. I may not be able to put that child in. Uh, did I speak clear enough? We'll try and figure that out. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Kids on the worship team, absolutely. I will talk to you next time on Worship Leader 101 with Rob Reed. God bless you. Take care.